Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to the Flying Cat Marketing Interview Series. Today I have Damien Sheridan all the way from, where are you, Malaga? I'm in Malaga at the moment, yeah. I'm on an extended lockdown break. In on Malaga. an extended lockdown. <laughs> um, so Damien is the director of the Book Direct Show, which is an event for property managers um, who are trying to learn to book direct. They just had their most recent one in just a few months ago. Um, and he came up here to Barcelona where I met him in person. And then we clicked and we were like, I got to get you on my podcast. So thank you for joining me today. Thank you very much for having me. It's a real pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. So you're also an SEO consultant. Um, tell me a little bit about your SEO business. I am. Uh, well, like yourself. Yeah, I, uh, I work well. Actually, unlike you, you work with, with hospitality companies and businesses. I work really predominantly with short term rental property management companies, um, which I've done for probably about seven years. Um, I since my my last job job, uh, which was in London in 2012, uh, when I'd had enough of of the rat race. I, uh, I moved into SEO, um, self-taught, and yeah, I mean, my, my history in the short-term rentals goes back 18 years, 17, 18 years to a property that I rented in southern Spain, and really just things have evolved since then um, through developing my first website, which was appalling, uh, <laughs> through to now, you know, the, the advent of WordPress and, uh, and other CMSs, which make life a lot easier for us all. Indeed. So, yeah, so really predominantly the short term rental market I work in. Um, it's interesting that you say you're self taught. I actually don't know an SEO who's not self taught. <laughs> um, well, yeah, that's, that's true. I mean, there are a lot of courses, though, out there that you can take, which, uh, which can be you know, pretty expensive, but I think there's, there's no. Um, it, there's no alternative then, you know, really just to get in, involved in it yourself and, uh, yeah, really just, just jump in and, and learn, learn the bones of it over, over many years. Yeah, I agree. There's also, um, cause I know some people who go to school for marketing. I have this friend mm. who's going to school for marketing and then she's going to get a graduate degree. She got two masters in marketing. Now she's going to go get a graduate degree in marketing in order to become a marketer. Um, and that's one way to go, mm -hmm. but I'm like, what about starting to market something <laughs> and seeing what, what yeah, happens? yeah, that's a, that's a lot of time and money involved in, uh, in getting a, uh, well, not even getting a business going. Uh, yeah. I, I, for me, it's, it's all about experience. And even if, you know, if you bring on a few clients free of charge, you know, that really can be the way to start off your business. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Which I did at the very beginning and uh, you know and I'm really glad I did um, because otherwise you know it can take a long time and you know I know I've got uh, nieces and nephews and, and friends who are just coming out of university now not a good time to be coming out of university you know which and you might be waiting a year or two to get involved in something you really want to do so tough times yeah so when you do now SEO for your clients um, tell me a little bit about that process do you do you create some content for them or is it more SEO optimizing the web, the home? It's, it's both really. Yeah. I mean, these are businesses that have got several, if not scores of properties. So they are established anyway. Um, but as you and I know, my event SEO is something that a lot of people, uh, they know they need to do, but they don't know how to do it. And even when you explain to them what the process is, their eyes can completely glaze over it. It's, it's, it's not exciting, you know, but it's a process and it's a, it's a long ongoing process really that as, as we know, never ends. So it's about, first of all, I work with them on their current uh, content, you know, uh, recycling it if it need be, making sure it's fully optimized and then working on the dreaded link building and then ensuring, you know, that we've got um, good strategies for that. And uh, yeah, I mean, the many, hundreds of things that, that go alongside SEO. Um, we, we, we just build a, an overall strategy for the coming six to 12 months. Yeah. And, um, you know, we make sure that clients, for example, they can see the data, they can see the milestones because it can be incredible how many businesses don't use their Google Analytics. You know, they, they have ins they installed it, but have never gone back or very rarely use it. You know, it's something we should all be using every day. Uh, or at least a few times a week just to see you know how what's the success of of all of these marketing efforts that we're putting yeah. in 
be it SEO, be it you know social media, pay per click, etc. We, uh, we we need to know what works and, and what doesn't. Yeah, I find it fascinating how there's such a different understanding, at least from the client's perspective, between SEO content and marketing. Uh, because I have some people asking me or asking me for a quote, I give them a quote and I, I do SEO, but mainly what I do is content, but I think that you need content to support the SEO. Uh, and then the SEO should support the content. It's kind of a circle. Yeah. And they just say, well, I don't really need the content right now. I just need somebody to do the SEO. Yeah. And I'm like, what are they selling you? <laughs> like, yeah, you yeah exactly. Yeah. And it's, the, and it's the quality content as well, I think too. There is this assumption that you know, the more content on your site, the better it is. But, you know, as, as we know, that is not the case. It's all about the quality. It's all about retaining people on, on your site and, um, you know, delivering them the, the experience that they need and deserve when they, when they hit your site and, and converting accordingly. Um, because at the end of the day, it's all about the conversion to leads or bookings yeah. or whatever it is you need, you know. And, and I think we also, as marketers, we can lose sight of that. You know, we, we might achieve our goal in, in bringing people to, to a website, Ooh, job done, but it's not at all. You know, we need, we need to get them to do what we want them to do. We need to make that as easy as possible. And the overall experience has to be just you know, top notch, mm -hmm. uh, which, is, which is difficult because you've, you've, you know, you may have created the an excellent content to bring them there, um, but then you've got a further step to, uh, to get over uh, yeah. to, you know, to, to get that lead or, or whatever it is you want to get that e-commerce sale. It's true. I have some, some clients tell me, not clients, just people. <laughs> <laughs> just people, <laughs> real people. <laughs> <laughs> but saying, oh, we have pretty good results with our content. Um, I'm like, cool. Awesome. And then, and then looking at some of their blog posts or the majority of their blog posts, there's no call to action, not even to sign up to their newsletter. Um, and then it just brings me to wonder, then the, the good results is just traffic, I guess, but then what is happening? What's happening yeah. with that traffic? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, you know, in terms of your, your overall bounce rate as well, yes, people can, can come in and, and enjoy the, the content that they've read, but then they may have got their answer and then they leave. Yeah. You know, is that actually benefiting you as a business? Probably not. I mean, it might build your brand up a little bit with them, but uh, at the end of the day, you need them to do something. You're not creating all of this work, this content, all of these work these kind of uh, roles behind the scenes for nothing. You know, you yeah. want them to book with you, certainly in terms of the short-term rental industry, you want them to at least to make an inquiry or to, uh, to make a booking. So, um, yeah. What are your favorite metrics to track? Ooh, that's a tricky one. Well, I mean, the thing is, as an SEO, clearly my job, uh, and I, I work predominantly in SEO. So uh, visitor stats are, are probably the, the most important. But conversions really to newsletters are, are a, a very important one, for sure. Yeah, I mean, the, the data, really, it's all about the data. In terms of the booking process for anyone booking a, a rental property, there, I mean, the data stats vary wildly um, in terms of how many comparisons your average booker needs to go onto different sites and, and book. But at very least, if you've gotten their data, name email address that is of fundamental importance to me because you've got something to build on then and you've got something to remind them about in the future you add them to your email marketing campaigns for example you know be it once every week or or month or whatever and uh, and you've, you've got them then you know potentially of course do you help your clients with email marketing as well I get it's more about suggestions um, and I overlook it, but I don't actually carry that myself. No, most of them, well, most of them try to do it themselves. Uh, but again, it's, it's amazing how it might just be once a year that they, they do this once every six months. It's really not they're, they're not they're not keeping in there with their prospective guests, guests, mm -hmm. not even just inquirers, actual guests to previous guests. You mean um, they're not maintaining they're not sending them emails? No, not at all. No, not letting them know about their brand. Uh, and even if they are, I'm sure you've come across this as well, Maeve, there's, it's they're overly salesy too. It's all about, you know, the offer. This, this is our offer this week on this property. This is our offer, uh, you know, this percent discount. And yeah, that's important to get across, but really is that of interest to most of your 
uh, your database? No, they want to know, you know, potentially about your area or something that's different that's going on events, you know, best guides or, or whatever, you know, actual informative reads, not just what's, you know, what properties on on a particular discount for August yeah. or something. Yeah, it's it's tricky. There's a lot of uh, industries who build email lists for no reason. Mm, yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's hard work, isn't it? Yeah. You know, to, to build so these up. The metric I'm tracking, but why? Yeah, I mean, now why? you have a large email list. Are you going to use it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. I'm curious because um, there's a little bit of debate. Uh, not so much debate, it's not a super controversial topic, but I'm still curious about how you approach it um, in terms of sort of the funnel and the kind of content that you're creating at e each part of it. For example, you have these very bottom of the funnel keywords um, mm. that have low traffic really, uh, but the people are much more ready to make a purchase right there on the spot. How do you balance or how do you approach this strategically of what content to create first? Oh, that's a, uh, that's a never ending dilemma. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even if you just go in, think of it in terms of long tailed and, and short tail keywords. Yeah, uh, do you try and chase that traffic that is, is huge uh, on a daily or monthly basis, but has got enormous competition? No, my feeling is initially you, you, you try and get the, the more high intent, but much less searched. Um, search queries. Um, I think that's the, what they call the low hanging fruit. Uh, I don't want to come out with too many, uh, you know, cliches, but I think it's, it's a really, it can be an easier win. It's not an easy win, but it's an easier win. And if you focus on specific locations in your area, use some, you know, very simple keyword tools like you know, answer the public or something like this. There's some, there's some great data out there that can really help you to, to build some, some really excellent content and whilst you might only get, you know, 10, 50 visits per month on uh, off the back of that content, that can be gold. That can be the yeah. value of gold. So that, no, that, that is my advice to most of my clients initially for the first few months. It's hard to kind of buy them on that though, I found, where they say, wait, there's only 10 search volumes for this a month. Can we go for this one that has 2000? Oh, yeah, well. What will we doing with you? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, but it's, you know, the intent is really important as well. You know, and uh, and this is a big thing with well, you know, with any industry, uh, that that level in, level of intent and uh, and knowing what that user is, where where they're at, um, uh, you know, and not just at that kind of very informative kind of uh, uh, level, whereby they're just, you know, they might just be be look. It could just be a university student, you know, just looking at yeah. data or something like this, which is really common. This this kind of thing. So um, so no. Bottom of the funnel, definitely for me, um, that low hanging fruit, for sure. You start with that and then eventually do you create some top of the funnel content as well? Oh, oh, oh for sure I would, but it'll all depend on how the, the strategy, uh, well, how successful the, the the website probably is already, in all honesty. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, you th there are ways to to manipulate that slightly and, uh, you know, with some, some good link building, building strategies, obviously uh, tied in there, internal linking, et cetera. Yeah. So yes, of course, it's, it's a sweet, the, uh, there's a sweet spot there. There's a balance between the two. Uh, but I think the, the, the easier win to start off with mm -hmm. is longer tailed keywords for sure. So now you're doing this, uh, some SEO consultancy, but you're also doing the book direct show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's uh, yeah, so um, roughly two years ago, um, I so I was doing SEO for property management companies, and these are generally companies who you know have a, a lateral thinking, they they understand that they need to do something a little bit more, a little bit different. They can't rely on OTAs like Airbnb booking for all of their bookings, and it's staggering in our industry how. The, the percentage of, of bookings that are generated by three or four platforms. I mean, you probably know, uh, but it's, uh, you know, some many new clients that I deal with, they are looking at between 90 and 95% of new bookings coming in from, yeah, from two or three platforms. Yeah. It's staggering. I, I don't know any other industry where this, this uh, happens. You know, <laughs> these, these few businesses are, are dictating everything. 
Um, and I also felt that events in our industry, on, on, in the events calendar, were, were also going this way. It was they were being monopolized by these same few companies uh, who obviously have got the money to spend on, on sponsorship. And there was very little education in terms of how property managers can, can really not so much go it alone because you, this, it's not a case of being totally independent from OTAs. They, they provide far too important service for us all, but really just to diversify a business and just to look elsewhere because there's so many other routes to bookings that you can be looking at. So yeah. one thing led to another and we had our first event in London this February. I can't believe it was this, this year. We've done two this year of all years to choose. <laughs> uh, did one event in London just a few weeks before lockdown kicked in in Europe and uh, did another one online in September and they were they were a great success and all about direct booking strategies you know how you can diversify your business and retain a level of of control and independence over your own business this is the thing it's your own business it's not you know it doesn't belong to a few OTAs who are kind of le yes leading the way but they don't you know it's not all about them it's about you. So how did you, did you find that um, running this event helped your business as well as an SEO consultant? Sure. Yeah. Uh, again, another reason I, I started this, um, this idea at least last year was because there's so many things I, I am a novice in completely. You know, I'm not, I have not got a kind of artistic creative bone in my body. Uh, but to learn about things like branding uh, is really eye-opening. And, and you know, I had someone amazing talking about branding in, in our London conference. So little things like this, yeah, it gives me a, a bit of an insight into, you know, the, there's so many ways to, you know, to, to get new eyeballs on our own websites. Um, and SEO is just one of many, you know, scores of, uh, of ways. And social media as well. I'm, I'm not the best on social media, but I'm learning all the time and, uh, you know, we had, we had 50 people presenting at the Book Direct Show in September and I learned from them. And one of the, the things that makes, my, 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 makes me warm and fuzzy is hearing all of the presenters say the same thing that they've learned so much. And these are experts, real, you know, book direct advocates from around the world. And they say, we learned so much from all the other presenters. It's, uh, it's great. And how did you connect with them and get these experts to come and speak to your event? Um, some I stalked for a number of months <laughs> on LinkedIn. Uh, others I knew, I got you know, quite a, a, a wide network in the industry, having been in it for, for several years. Um, so a bit of both, yeah. But really the most important thing was people that weren't going to be selling a product. And we, we yeah. turned down a lot of applications because I think people were more interested in talking about their product and actually oh. about our booking strategies. Um, we knew these people were all about, genuinely, all about the direct booking movement and uh, didn't necessarily need to, to talk about their product. Um, they, they wanted to just share their expertise, which, uh, you know, which I learned from and, and, and I hope our, our few hundred attendees did as well. That's really cool. Are you guys gonna do, you guys are gonna do another one yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, uh, roughly the same time next year, September, October. We really hope it can be an in-person event, yeah. uh, either in London or in Barcelona. Uh, but hey, we'll see. We probably won't be able to make a call on it till February or March time. And hopefully the world is in a better place um, and we can, you know, we can start to make some actual plans to meet actual people. <laughs> Woohoo! So you have a team <laughs> actually helping you. Yes. Yeah. Got a team of, there's three of us uh, and, and, a, and a couple more jumping in here and there to help as and when. But uh, yeah, I mean, the bigger it gets, probably the bigger the team will need to be. Um, so yeah, the, my first event in London was just me, which was very tough. And I probably took, took on board a little bit too much. Uh, it was exciting, but there were several sleepless nights and uh, yeah. having a team makes it a lot easier. Yeah. Sure. Because doesn't it kind of just take over i mean <laughs> are you able to continue running your other business while also organizing a big event like that it's very tough yeah some of my clients are very understanding and uh, i've had to delegate a few things um or at least tell them that i might have to draw back slightly over the you know the coming month or two um or yeah just delegate to their team specific jobs but yeah, it's very difficult to uh, to to prioritize one thing over another.
but you know, we, I try to balance it out as best as possible. Awesome. And I guess next time you're going to have an even bigger team. Cause right before we got on this uh, call, you were telling me how you're going to, you would love to start outsourcing. <laughs> Delegation. I need to delegate. Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. We, we need to bring on a team of people. I mean, you know, there's, there's no end to what we can do to not, not only the logistics of an event, because an in-person event obviously requires a huge amount of logistics as well as cost. Um, so we've got the, the, obviously that operational element, but also the marketing element as well. So yeah, the, the bigger it gets, the more people will be involved. Yeah. So yeah, watch this cool. space. I mean, there were some uh, very special people at the at your last one. Um, really great speakers. So yeah. and I, I'm truly honored to have had them as well. They were they had so much to teach and so so much to say and. Uh, yeah, and, and we might be in contact with your good self for the next hey. one. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool. Uh, awesome. Well, thank you so much for being with me here today in the, these last 20 minutes. It's been a pleasure to speak to you. Thank you uh, very much for having me. Serious. Where can people find you if they want to connect with you? They, LinkedIn is probably the best place. So I'm just Damien Sheridan and you'll see a picture of me uh, with a, a microphone looking like a game show host at the moment. Um, so yeah, probably the easiest place uh, to, to meet me. Uh, I'm also at seoconnect.co.uk or the Book Direct Show online, just Google the Book Direct Show. Uh, but yeah, hook up with me on, on LinkedIn and, and we can have a chat. I'm always happy to connect. Awesome. That's also where we met actually. Initially. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. And we met, we met the night of, uh, of our show. We, we had grand plans to have a, a nice, a really great social evening. And in the end, we could only have six people. <laughs> so, uh, two tables of six. So yeah, it's uh, it not was, the best was, time to be. It was still a lot of fun. It was. It was exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, excellent. All right. Well, thank you so much, Damien. It's been a pleasure. And uh, if whoever's watching this, if you enjoyed this episode, Ping Damien, say hello and thanks. Share it with your colleagues uh, and like it. So it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. And until next time.